after a disaster, people are going to get information from a lot of different ways. And this, again, will depend on your level of preparedness. In all of our kits, we need to have a radio, and that's going to be one of the key ways of getting information. All our media will be broadcasting about the event, especially if it's a significant event like an earthquake. We don't know after an earthquake what we're going to have available. We still may have internet connections. If we do, you know, we can get information off the internet. We just caution you with Twitter. You know, if it's coming from a verified source, the city of Vancouver, the city of Prince George, we know it's accurate information. If it's somebody randomly walking down the street tweeting, we may not know if that's verified information. So just make sure it's coming from a verified source. And that's a really important part, making sure the information is verified. It depends on the situation. For those events, I don't know why, but I know what we'd be looking at in the Lower Mainland or you know, any part of BC with significant events is we've got to get the supplies to us. How are they coming in? Are the roads damaged? Are the airports damaged? All of these things need to be looked at. And an earthquake, we know there will be significant damage and it will slow down the supplies coming in. They will come in, but you're truly going to be on your own until such time that they do. If people need to evacuate their home after an event such as an earthquake, it is going to take time for any of our communities to open up reception centers or group lodging centers. We don't want to say to the public, come to the reception center at this location until we've had a building inspector go through and say yes that facility is safe. If we open it up to the public, the public comes in, we have an aftershock, we may be putting you in more danger. That's what takes us back to the personal and family preparedness. You need to be able to look after yourself for at least 72 hours. A week is even better. If we have a major earthquake, we know our bridges will be closed and people have to incorporate that into their plans. You work downtown Vancouver, you live on the North Shore, you're probably not getting home. Depending on the magnitude and the damage, it could be some time. You need to plan that out with your family. Having a work kit at work, that's a really good place to start. I do a lot of sessions in offices and I see people in their high heel shoes, men in their dress shoes. You're not getting too far in a pair of shoes like that. So having a pair of running shoes, having a change of clothes is a good place to start. Your number one concern is always going to be your family. So having an out of area contact, having ways to connect with your family, that is a really good starting point. If you live on a disaster response route, those routes are for first responders. Those routes are to get supplies into our communities following an event. What will likely happen with them is they will be closed at certain periods to get people in. People will still likely be traveling them, but at certain times when the trucks are coming in with the supplies, when our first responders are coming into our communities, those routes will be shut down at those times to help move people and goods. Most of the communities throughout our province have pre-identified locations where their reception centers will be set up. If you live in a community and you're not sure, talk to your local city hall. They can let you know what has been pre-identified. In the Lower Mainland, most of our communities will use our regular community centers and they will be set up as safe places for evacuees to go. We are not able to open them until we have a building inspector go through and we don't know in an earthquake where the damage is going to be located. If you use the city of Vancouver as an example, if the damage is in the Kitsilano area, likely not a good place for our community centre. We will select another area 
where our centres will be open. That will all be broadcast over the media and social media. That's how the message is going to be getting out. But you need to remember it's going to take time. You need to look after yourselves first. We know when a disaster happens, people are going to be coming with their pets and setting up reception centres. We need to be aware that we have people with allergies to pets, but we also have people that will be bringing their pets we may be setting up pet-friendly reception centers, areas in the reception center where people can take their pets. A lot of communities have partnerships with the SPCA and other animal agencies, and you know, that will be advised to the public as what to do. I think as the public, though, first off, you need to develop your pet's grab-and-go kits and be prepared to take your pet with you. If you are not with your family when a major disaster happens, you need to have your plans in place. The more ways you have to connect with your family, the better the chances you will connect. We know in an earthquake, you are likely not going to have access to your cell phones. We see that with big events downtown, you know, when we have a lot of people grouped together, we have a lot of lost calls. In a big event such as an earthquake, we will probably have cell phone towers that have toppled. And I think it's pretty safe to say cell phones, for the most part, will not be available to us. What we have seen a lot of success with is our out-of-area contacts. And this is simply identifying a friend or family member that lives out of the province that you and your family will call. With long-distance lines, if you can sometimes get through easier, you can make that call and that may be a way of connecting with your family. Social media, we've seen a lot of success with that. So sit down with your family, talk about how you're going to connect if you're not together. Having a family meeting place in a location where your family may be, things like that can really help out as well. If people are interested in getting involved to help support their communities during times of disaster, contact your local city hall. We have emergency social services throughout British Columbia, and those are the, pe the volunteers that come together to look after the people that have been impacted. The training for emergency social services is provided through the Justice Institute of BC, and it's an awesome way to get involved and help out when a disaster happens.